Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the next presentation. Uh, my name is Mark Scott, and I'm a solutions engineer here at the Esri Boston office. And I'm going to talk to you about Quick Capture, which is the latest addition to our ever growing list of apps uh, to support field mobility. Um, <clears throat> so I have a some a few slides here and uh, a brief demonstration. Um, I'm hoping that this will generate some interest. You can always feel free to email me at mscott.esri.com for follow-up questions and the crew behind the scenes will also try to hit on the Q&A materials that you may or may not post. Um, I, Tom and Matt did the, what was it, like three things about me? Uh, I'm not gonna do that, but I will say that there's three things I really miss right now, and that's sports, sports, and sports. So the sooner maybe we can get back to maybe the Bruins playoff run or the Red Sox season starting, I'll be happy. Okay, so let's talk about Quick Capture. So Quick Capture is a pretty interesting uh, new addition we've got. Like I said, it's in our field operations family of products. Um, many of you are already using these. Uh, this is like when I, if I was at Spring New York in person, I'd be asking people to raise their hands and say like, you know, how many are using Collector and how many are using Survey123 and that sort of thing. Uh, but we can't do that here. So we're gonna go ahead and just forge ahead. Um, our tools that we have for field data collection, like Collector and Survey123 have been around for a while. Uh, they continue to evolve and grow. Uh, and Quick Capture is just uh, the latest one that we've that we've got uh, in our arsenal. So often I have questions of, you know, which one's better? Should I always use Survey123 or should I always use Collector? And the answer to that is never straightforward. Oh, it's this is always better here and that's always better there. They're just three different tools that collect data in three different ways. Uh, I'm going to talk more about Survey123 uh, later in the seminar. Uh, but right now we're going to focus on Quick Capture. So Quick Capture, uh, the easiest way to describe it is a big button mobile app. That is definitely true. It is designed for creating an interface that's got very large buttons that are easy to find. There's not a lot of form to navigate through, say like with Survey123. There's very little interaction with the map that you might do, say with Collector. Um, it's the way to keep field data collection as simple, as straightforward, and as fast as possible. Hence the name Quick Capture. Um, also intended to be used with uh, at speed and uh, like moving data collection workflows. So whether you're walking, biking, in a car, in a plane, in a boat, uh, moving along, uh, you can use this tool uh, to collect that information. Um, some other things I might want to mention, uh, it's fully supported on all three platforms. You can see uh, in uh, iOS devices, Google, on Android, uh, and Windows. Um, I'm running it on all of the above. Uh, um, today I'm going to show you it running on my Google Pixel 4. So I'm going to be using the Android platform, but I've also got it going on my iPad. So when I say at speed inventory, what am I talking about? Um, we're talking about data that's being collected primarily from a vehicle. So here's an example with Colorado DOT. Uh, they are using quick capture to do inspections uh, as the plow drivers are driving along. So they're collecting all sorts of information and metrics. Uh, that's a pretty impressive plow there with that. I guess that's a sander or something in the, where it's, it's dragging behind that other piece of the plow. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that in New England, but I could be wrong. Um, the, you can see the buttons on the phone display on the right. Uh, they've got things where they're picking up, say, information about guardrails or a single post sign to say, hey, this sign is missing, maybe got hit by a plow. Uh, or we've got a multi-post -post sign. We can see that it's been damaged or knocked over. Um, maybe you've got a guardrail delineation where you're going to hit the big button to say at this point the guardrail is damaged or missing and then I hit another button and it tells me that okay that was the the length of the guardrail piece that that I wanted to collect uh, so all, all sorts of things like that so pretty interesting uh, here's another one I like this one a lot 
So uh, from Minnesota Power, uh, doing aerial surveys uh, and inspections. So they're pulling all this uh, information up on a tablet. And so there may be someone in the chopper that's uh, filling out the data, or maybe it's the guy that's actually uh, you know, doing the work on the line. But what they're doing is they've got big icons for each one of these immediate repair things that they see. So they might get there and see that there's damage to a, trans a transformer, uh, or there's something loose or something burned, or maybe there was a lightning strike. And by filling out all of the combinations in this screen, they can easily go in and just hit the screen five or six times uh, and fill out all the information that they're collecting. So, you know, is this a uh, standard inspection that we're doing or is this an emergency? Is this something that has to be addressed right away? Do I have to send out a different crew because I don't have the right equipment? All that stuff is coded uh, into these buttons um, to make it extremely simple and extremely easy for um, the field personnel uh, to go out and, and get this done and, and pull that information in. Here's one from New Zealand. Um, so this is, uh, they're collecting information uh, out in the street. So it's like an urban search and rescue. Uh, what, you know, what do we have here? It's maybe that's like a flooding, a flooding incident. So they hit that big button. Uh, then they come down to the occupants and they say, um, we need occupant follow-up. Why is that? Because it's blocked and we have no access. So maybe the water's across the road. We have to bring either a boat or a helicopter in uh, to rescue these folks. Uh, and then they can decide uh, you know, how they want to categorize that uh, back in the, in the system. Uh, you can see also at the bottom of the screen, we're collecting the GPS accuracy. I'll talk about that a little bit as well. Um, and they're getting uh, 16 feet on one device and then one foot on another, on another device, uh, probably because they're using um, a GNSS receiver to collect a higher, uh, a higher resolution GPS fix. So that's something that you can do with collector and survey one, two, three, and you can do that with quick capture as well. You can pair it with another device. Uh, here's a cool app uh, with trail maintenance and mapping in, in Quebec. So uh, the person is riding around on a bicycle. Um, I'm assuming that's some sort of like a GoPro camera or something he's got mounted as well as his GPS device. And then he's just got that, the phone is mounted on the bicycle and they are on the move and collecting information about say signals and signs and exits and entrances, um, any sort of like an emergency point, uh, or are we going out to like get a better location for something because the location that we have in the map is pretty poor. Um, so collecting all of that, uh, again, by setting up a, a simple interface with all these big buttons on it. Uh, here's one here for King County. Uh, this is like for weed abatement. Um, so this is, they're, they're collecting that information out in the field and pulling it back in. I don't really have a good like, screen capture of what their, their interface screen looks like, but um, that's another one. Okay, so how do we do this? Uh, there's a couple ways to get to the place you wanna be. So we have this thing called the Quick Capture Designer, and this is a web-based tool um, that's going to be used to create your own Quick Capture projects. So what you do is you load up the designer and then you make some decisions like, do I want to use an existing feature layer that I have, or do I want to use a template? So we've got a bunch of templates that we might be able to use uh, to be able to get started in case you don't have anything. Um, if some, some of you have used the data collection templates that we've got uh, for like a search and rescue or, or like a, uh, manhole inspections that, that, that we've got through some of the solutions. So it's a similar idea. It's just like a, a starting point on a project where you could start, you know, getting the information pulled together, or you can just build your own. You can roll your own. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to get to this. You can see the link at the bottom. You can go to quickcapture.arcgis.com uh, and it will uh, send you to the right place. Uh, or you can use the app launcher in ArcGIS Online. So I will show you how to do that here in a minute. So the device variables, uh, you can use those to automatically calculate GP, GPS attributes when they're captured. So things like horizontal accuracy, vertical accuracy, um, all of those things, all of those metrics come from your device uh, and you can collect that into Quick Capture. Uh, and there's over 40 of these variables. So the time of the capture, direction of the travel, speed, it will do its best job to figure out like what the, what the speed of the vehicle was. 
or something like that, okay? Uh, user input, you can set that up so the user could interact uh, with um, the Quick Capture project. Uh, typically, the goal here is to have very little to no uh, interaction outside of pushing buttons. But you may have some situations where you're going to want the inspector or whoever the person is out there uh, to be able to enter information. Okay, so you can configure that. So if, if you wanna have that. And it's, right now it's pretty simple. Uh, you just configure it as like a simple uh, single line text field uh, or multiple lines. Um, as we go through and updating and new versions of Quick Capture, they've got a lot of plans on having this be a lot more uh, flexible and a lot more powerful. Um, and they're starting to integrate things like data validation rules, which is pretty cool. So you can like try to make sure that everything's going in there correctly. I will say though, however, that the whole idea behind creating all these multiple buttons on the interface is so that you don't have to worry about making the wrong decision. Everything is already pre-coded. So if I'm picking up a location of roadkill, I'm gonna have that all pre-programmed in and then I'm gonna have a button and if I want to have multiple buttons for the type of roadkill, is it a deer, is it a raccoon, is it a porcupine, then I would want to develop individual buttons for each one of those types. Okay, so that's, that's again, that's sort of the idea behind using Quick Capture. Okay, you can also set up exclusive groups so you can capture multiple observations at the same time, which is kind of cool. So you can have like two different groups, so the, the buttons would be grouped up together to say like I'm going to collect information on the left and right side of the sidewalk all at the same time. Okay, so here's this issue that's sort of like a, that's a good example of the user input. Like on that one, if you click issue, you're going to take a picture of it, but then you're also going to type in like a, a comment. So that might be an instance where you, you want to do that. Um, other ways to do that I've seen is that you flag it as an as a problem you take the picture and then continue on and then it's passed off to some like another crew a different type of a crew that would then go out to potentially repair the problem or fix it so there's a lot of different ways you can implement that okay all right so let's do like a quick little tour here so let me jump over to my ArcGIS online screen. So I've got a, a, a bunch of demonstration organizations that I use for city and county government. Um, this one's currently configured for county, but I could use it for cities as well, which is what I'm going to do. Um, you could go to that link I pointed out with quickcache.arcgis.com, or you can go to your app selector. So the nine little buttons up here and come right down here to quick capture. And it knows that I'm already logged in. And uh, I've got some demo projects that I've put in here. Um, and let's just go ahead and, and make a new one. So for example, I could say, hey, I'm gonna make it um, from a template. And I wanna get, for, say for example, an urban search and rescue project. So I'm gonna say, go ahead and use this template. And I'll just put in like a demo. And I'm gonna put this in my sandbox folder. So that way I know I can just go in here and trash all this stuff later. <laughs> So it goes and creates the project. Uh, I had a question uh, from a user a few weeks ago about uh, wanting, asking if they were ever gonna have the project creation on an app. And I think they actually, that is in consideration to build like a project designing app rather than have it work through a website. Um, so I, I think that they're, they're looking at that. Okay, so here's what I get from my template. So with my template, I get, for example, I get you know an animal hazard. If I want to rename these, I could I could change it to something else. I've got like hazard fire, other hazard flood, hazard at hazardous material. How do I know what that is? I can click on the data tab over here, and it will tell me that I'm requiring a photo. Okay, or if I wanted to, I could turn that off and say no, I'm not going to require them to take a picture. Um, it's a single point, not streaming points. I'm ca th this is the telemetry I'm ca I'm capturing from the GPS device, you can see all that down here. And then the observation type is a hazardous material and that's coming from, from, a, a, from a list, from a domain uh, inside of the, the feature class that's been set up. Okay, so I can do whatever I want with these. I can say I don't wanna collect some of this 
data or I do, um, I could turn some of these off. I might look at some of these buttons and say, yeah, we don't really care about half of this stuff. We all we really care about is uh, whether or not the, you know, it's all about occupant, which is all we were, all we care about is that stuff. So you, you could get rid of that. Um, when you're done with it, you say, I'm going to go ahead and share it. And the project gets saved, a couple of warnings. Usually it's things like, you know, make sure that the data is there. Um, this is if it's not uh, shared correctly to a group, you got to make sure you do that so that the, the, the folks that are logging in and using this um, are able to get to it. I will talk about public projects in a bit. Okay, so uh, uh, now I've got uh, this other project in here and I can always find that on my device which I will now pull up. So this is on my phone. So I've got a Google Pixel 4, so it's an Android device. Um, I've got my workspace here. So I've, I've loaded this up from the, from the Google Play Store. And I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and browse for some of these new projects. So here's this urban search and rescue one that I just created. So I can go ahead and add that. And you can see that this is what the, the user is gonna get. Okay, so I will go click on say animal hazard and now you get to see a picture of my office that I've got here. Uh, if there was an animal hazard, it would be right there because that's usually where my cat sleeps and it's a hazard to him because if I don't know he's there, I'll sit on him by accident. So, and then you click on that, uh, you actually get some audio feedback, which you probably can't hear where it comes back and says, you know, animal hazard. Um, and then that information is collected. So let's do a couple more. Uh, let's say like uh, occupant rescued and we'll take a picture of my computer stuff over there. We'll say done. Uh, and then we'll say, okay, that's good. We're all set. And we're good. So where does that stuff go is the next obvious question. So if I go to my county org and I look under content, and I come down here to my sandbox folder, you'll see that this is where this all gets put. So my quick capture projects are just listed as items. So I've got like this road to be debris reporter or demo urban search and rescue. Then there's a feature layer that's associated with it. So that's all stored here. And this is all just in ArcGIS Online, all right? So I can go in here and take a look at that and confirm that the data is all there. I could build myself a nice dashboard and say that, you know, here's the two pieces that I, that I pulled up here. And if I were to like look at one of those, I can like see these in the map and everything's good. Okay, so you could build yourself a dashboard off this to say like, as, we, as we're coming in here and our, our, our crews are out in the field collecting all this information, um, they're gonna go in and log it and then we're gonna see it in a dashboard. I'm just doing, I'm just using the visualize tool here in ArcGIS Online and I'm getting a little bit of lag here, probably because multiple people in the house all using the internet. So there we go. So there's our points. So there's, there's that, that first one there with the attachment and you can like just see that picture. So you can see how everything is collected. All right, so everything is just in there. Okay, so that's great. Another way to do this is to do it based off an existing data set. Okay, so say I've already got some data. So for example, I could say, I'm gonna start from an existing layer that I have, and I could just go find this. So for example, I know I've got data in here that I use for another demo, and this is from the city of Poughkeepsie, New York. And I'm gonna say, this is this layer I've got for sewer data, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my city of Poughkeepsie folder, and I'm gonna call this demo QC, and I can't spell. So I'll go ahead and create that. And what's it gonna, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create this based on the layers that it finds. So I might look at this and say, well, I don't need the parcels. I don't really care about that. I don't care about the sewer lines. All we really cared about here is the manholes. Okay, so what I would do here is I would configure a button for all the information I wanna collect about each one of these manholes. So for example, I wanna go in here and I wanna collect information on all the manholes that are in poor condition. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and say, we've got these manholes that are in really bad shape. They're gonna to need to be replaced. They're gonna to need to be repaired, something like that, all right? So we'll change this and we'll say, we're gonna make this pour and we'll change the color to red to sort of like light that up. Okay, and it's automatically gonna fill in that condition as being poor. And it's gonna, if, if I wanted to fill in um, other values in any of the other data fields, I could do that. So that's all in here. So you can say like, okay, whenever it's poor, I wanna put a coded value in here that someone has to return. And we'll set the coded value for, of return. And then we'll say, we're gonna set that to yes. So whenever they collect information about a manhole and it's determined that it's in poor shape, um, I'm going to set that up, okay? Like, and another thing I could do is like, before I go out, I could go in and say, I'm, I'm gonna put my field, oh, so I'm gonna put my field crew in here since I'm on the field doing this, when I configure this project. Okay, so now I've got one for poor, and maybe for the poor one, um, I'll set up taking a picture as well. Um, and then I wanna put another button in here, and maybe we'll make this one, We'll say this is good. And we'll change that color to green since green is good. And we'll come back over here to the data. And we'll say that's coming off my PK sewer layer. And this is going to be good condition. And it's not going to require anything in here. And it's not going to require anybody to return. And again, I could put my field crew name in there if I wanted to before I go out and save that. So you can see how that works. I could set this up for all of my different condition codes and have a whole grid here of condition codes to be able to go through. Um, and then when I go back to what does it look like in Quick Capture, you can see, for example, here's one that I created and I set one up for poor, for good, and for fair. So whenever I click on poor, um, I probably then want to take a picture. I didn't set the picture up as mandatory in that one. Um, and then we've got the other ones that are good or fair or whatever we want to do there. Okay, so that's, that's just that, that example. And the reason you don't see the one that I just did is that I haven't loaded it onto the phone yet. So there's that one for demo QC. And I open that one up and you can see that when I get poor, I'm forced to take a picture because it's then going to push that information all back for review. Okay, so that's a very, very quick uh, overview of some of the things you can do in Quick Capture. Some other stuff that you can do is we have the ability to go with public projects. Um, this has been available since December, but it's only available if you have Hub Premium. Okay, because this would require you to be collecting from the from like the public for like a crowdsourcing app or a citizen science app or a community engagement. Um, these actually work really great for these kind of kinds of projects where you set up the buttons and there's really not a whole lot of user input other than selecting which button you're going to click uh, and pull down that stuff. And then the end users can download and use this with or without signing in. It doesn't really matter. Okay, but this is a feature that is only available if you have Hub Premium. Okay, we did a cool project here. This was kind of fun that the team did. It was during Christmas and they had the Santa project. What you can do is you can share the Quick Capture project through a QR code uh, and then you go ahead and load it up and people were like clicking, they'd see Santa in the mall or like they took their kids to a, a store and and they captured Santa's location and got his picture. It was kind of fun. Okay, a few more things. I'm coming up against it on time. Um, this is licensed with uh, the field worker user type. Um, the, it can be added to an editor user as an add-in, an optional add-in, but if you have a field worker or higher um, user type, uh, then Quick Capture comes with it. Um, Quick Capture and Enterprise, it is supported with Enterprise 10.7.1 and above. Uh, I put this in here. I'm told that it works okay with previous versions. You have to do a little, some stuff. You gotta register the mobile app and the designer somehow. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how this is done, uh, but I've heard it can be done. 
Um, but starting with 10.8, uh, the enterprise setup will include Quick Capture Designer. So it'll just be, it'll just come with it. Okay, so that's, that's all in the process of this, of this app sort of maturing. Um, external GNS receiver support, uh, I have one of these, but I don't have it with me. It's in the office and I haven't been in the office since like March 12th. Uh, so I have a, a Bad Elf Surveyor which is a nice device. It can get like right around one meter resolution for like five or 600 bucks. We also support receivers from EOS, Leica, Trimble, the R1 and R2. Um, we have some folks in our office that have messed around with the R1, I know for sure. I have spoken with users that have picked up a Garmin uh, and they, they like that one. So there's a lot of devices out there uh, and they're great. They, they can give you a, a much better uh, GPS fix. Um, the receivers run through Bluetooth, uh, and if you're on Windows, uh, you can do it through USB uh, or the network. I've not done either one of those options. Um, I have only done this through Bluetooth uh, on my on my phone or my iPad. Uh, custom URL schema can be used to configure the portal URL, automatically download projects, uh, app links to integrate Quick Capture with other apps. I really don't have time to go over this, but it's all doable, um, very powerful. Um, data recovery workflows have been built in. So if you have like a, ca a capture project that fails, um, what you can do is it will dump it into this thing called a QCR file, a quick capture recovery file, will then be emailed to the project author. Uh, and then there's some processes to go through to pull that information out. I believe that there's uh, a tool in Pro that you can use to disseminate that if you have some sort of a failure. Um, we have that add-in in Pro, like I said, um, lets you view the geometry and the attributes and the error information. Then you can use the append tool to push that into the, into the feature layer. Um, and no, I do not believe that this tool will be put into ArcMap. Uh, documentation is a great place to find all this stuff. Um, you can get it all uh, online. Uh, that's pretty much the only place you're going to uh, find it, but it's quite extensive. Um, I learned pretty much everything I have pulled out uh, from the Quick Capture uh, help. There's a link for it down here, which you will get. Also, GeoNet, there's a great GeoNet community for Quick Capture. Uh, lots of questions and answers being bounced back and forth. Uh, I've learned a lot from users on using Quick Capture because they're actually out in the field doing the work, and uh, I'm in my office. Uh, where are we going with Quick Capture? Uh, we're pretty much up here in Dev Summit, post Dev Summit rank, rank, uh, range where uh, we're pulling these things together around the user conference. There's gonna be some announcements made. As you know, the user conference is all online this year. So they're gonna be talking a lot about webhooks, um, quick capture links, uh, you, in putting this together with tools like uh, Integramat and Power Automate. Um, so that's gonna be neat. And they're also doing some research in wearables. So that would be, that would be kind of a cool thing too. Uh, before I finish, I want to plug uh, the hub. So I think everyone in every presentation has been plugging our hub. So we'll be posting more information here. This may or may not end up being where uh, the hub in, the hub may be where we plunk the PDFs down um, after the conference is over. So you can get all of those. But I encourage you to come and uh, follow the office on the hub and you'll get updates on anything and everything that we're doing uh, as we sort of move along here. The, the, having the, the regional office hubs has been really awesome. I give Tom and Krithka massive props for, for sort of shepherding this thing along.